Well, isn't that the, 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 the definition of infinity? That somewhere, some, if, if there is really an infinity, there is not only a you and an I, but there's a you and an I and everybody else we've ever met and all the exact events in the exact same order have gone down an infinite number of times, including this conversation. Okay, except. Except. Uh, um, there is, uh, I don't know how many people know this, but often it's mind blowing when you learn that some infinities are bigger than others. <laughs> Joe Rogan just leaned two feet away from the sure microphone. How does that? Yeah, not all how? infinities are the same size. But if it's infinity, then it's infinity. It's well, infinite. What is, well, no? Okay. Don't you remember when you were a kid? They said, what's the biggest number you know? A million. Well, there's a million and one. Right. Okay, how about a billion? Well, there's a billion and one. The annoying kid right. always added one to it. Okay, how about infinity? Well, infinity and one. Right. Okay, well, it turns out infinity and one and infinity are the same number. Okay? So, here's the... So, so for example, the number of, of counting numbers, so one, two, three, up to infinity... Okay. Right. The, the numbers you would use to count things, that's infinite. The number of irrational numbers, so the numbers that you cannot represent as a fraction, okay, Th that there's more, th there are more of those than there are counting numbers. Whoa. By far. So these are orders of infinity. Then there are more, there are more transcendental numbers then there are irrational numbers. What's a transcendental number? So that's a number that you'll never find as a solution to, to an algebraic equation. So pi is a transcendental number, e is a transcendental, these are, these are magic numbers that show up in mathematics. And there's, turns out, there's like an even bigger infinity of those than there is of these other two classes of numbers. And they use the, 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 um, the Hebrew letter aleph, uh, in, in, in ranking. So it's LF1, LF2, LF3, LF4. I think there are five levels of infinity. So my point is, um, just because there's infinite universes, to me, doesn't mean there's infinite conversations that have happened. And I'd want to really explore the depths of infinities before I say and agree with you that this conversation has happened a million, uh, you know, uh, an infinite. infinite number of times in just this way, except you have a different engineer sitting next to us, uh, or... And an infinite number of times where it's been Jamie, too, right? Yeah, the, in if principle, that, I mean, that's the argument that's that's given. But I think that we there's some nested infinities in there that deserve some explanation. My feeble brain is not handling this well. What are your thoughts on on alien life? on life outside of this planet. Is this I, something you think about? Yeah, I, I think there must be. Um, even in the solar system, I would not be surprised if we find microbes on Mars or on some of the moons of Jupiter or Saturn where there's liquid water. Like Europa. Yeah. And uh, the reason is, that if you think about, the reason I think that, and it's a guess, is because if you look at the history of life on Earth, then so Earth formed, and it was just a, it, there was no life, it was a ball of rock. And almost as soon as it cooled down, we see evidence of life. So certainly 3.8 billion years ago, possibly even further back than that, we see evidence of life on Earth. So somewhere along the line, geochemistry, active geochemistry became biochemistry on Earth. And we have some idea, you know, that, that if you get uh, gradients of temperature and acid and alkaline and the conditions that are naturally present on the surface of oceans then complex carbon chemistry spontaneously happens so we have a we know that life almost certainly we know that life began on earth i mean the, the other option is it came from space or something like that but it probably didn't <laughs> it probably began on earth um, so that means that at least here that happened and that we know that the conditions that led to the origin of life on Earth were present on Mars 3.8, 4 billion years ago. And we know that they're present on Europa today. So I don't see that, that there's anything special. Life is just chemistry. And, it, and the, the idea that geochemistry becomes biochemistry is not fanciful because it happened here. So I think that given the same conditions, it would be surprising to me if the same thing didn't happen in that life begins. So I, I, that's one of the, to test that is one of the great 
frontiers of science now. It's one of the great challenges, which is why another reason we're interested in Mars, because we know those conditions were there. We know there were what's called hydrothermal vent systems on the floors of oceans on Mars 3.8 or 4 billion years ago. So it would be good to know if what I've said is right. And the, the way we find out is to find life or evidence of past life. Well, you've heard this. Uh, we only use 10% of our brain. Yeah, but that's not real. There's a to there's an entire movie based on that premise. Lucy. Lucy. Yeah. Okay? That premise is false. It was never true. That's what's, that's another kind of thing. It was never true. Yeah, that annoyed me. I liked that movie, though. Yeah, it was fun. It was good seeing seeing yeah. Scarlet in that. Um, so, so and, and Morgan Freeman's in it. It's had some good, 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 yeah. good roles. So, so... Let's go back to where it started from. You know where that came from? There was a neuroscientist, well, a, a brain brain scientist, who, because you can't do experiments on human brains, that's not ethical, and all right? All you can do is wait till someone gets an accident, and so there's a nail gun that damages this part of the brain. Oh, you lost your, your language. Damage of this part, oh, you lost your short-term memory. Oh, you lost your long-term memory. And so you assemble the bits of what the brain is doing by people who were injured. This is a very slow, clumsy process, but that's all you've got. The person wrote, who had an article, said, the brain is so complex, today we only know what 10% of it is used for. Mm, and that got... Overnight, that became, we only use 10% of our brain. And that became the <laughs> mantra of school teachers getting children to rise to their potential. And there was no force operating against that coming into our culture. It wouldn't have ruined the movie if they didn't have that in there. I mean, it, there's no reason for that to be in the movie. The movie was fascinating as it was. They could have just given her some other power, but they went with that 10% thing. Yeah, but even the I mean, they didn't even need to do that. Okay, can I, give my, can I give my critique even of that? Let's say we did only use 10% of our brain. Okay. Here's my critique. Even if that were true. Okay. The smartest people you know, do they have an inkling of kinetic powers over objects in front of them? Why are we obsessed with extremely high intelligence having power over matter? Why aren't people with extremely high intelligence just good at solving problems? They're just the best people at solving problems in the world. We want superpowers. That speaking of debris, speaking mm. of debris, uh, there was this asteroid uh, that collided with Earth uh, over uh, Chelyabinsk in the Soviet Union, in Russia, sorry, uh, just near the Siberia, in the Ural Mountains, just on the coast of Siberia, on the, the border of Siberia. That was visible to everybody in broad daylight, and you had to like avert your eyes when it happened, and they felt a shockwave, and the shockwave broke windows and sent 600 people, nearly 1,000 people to the hospital. What happened? Well, because they saw the light and they came, they got up from their table and went to the window to see what had happened, there's a time delay between the shock wave and the light because light travels fast and sound travels slow. So they'll go to the windows and the shock wave hits and it blasts broken glass into their face. So it was a big band-aid collision that we had. Whoa. The injured people all needed basically band-aids. Okay, no one died but nearly a thousand people were injured. So at an auction, by the way, that, that actually exploded and pieces of it were recovered. At an auction, I purchased a piece of that meteorite, but you know what else I purchased? Some of the shards of glass mm. that the shockwave had broken. There was a group of scientists that were speculating that it's possible that octopi had come from somewhere else. Some frozen eggs had actually come from somewhere else and, and landed on Earth. And these were like legitimate scientists who were contemplating, not morons. I mean, for example, you sure. might have seen the other day we found an Earth rock on the moon. Yes. Right, well, they, well it's back yeah. on Earth now because the Apollo right. astronauts brought it back, didn't they? It was four billion years old or something like One that. One of the oldest rocks ever found. Yeah. Right. So, so we know that material gets transferred between planets. Um, and so it's not inconceivable that microbes could survive that journey. Right. We know that microbes can survive in space, for example. So that isn't mad. Uh, it's, right. it's probably unlikely, but it's not mad. But with the octopus, I hadn't heard that. But the thing is that the octopus is still extremely similar biologically to us. 
I mean, the differences are negligible. Yeah. So it's still got the same energy system with a single ATP and DNA and all that stuff. It's all very, very similar. If you made it to the end and you enjoyed the video, please make sure you like and subscribe for more videos in the future. Thank you.